This is the celery bog. This is one of my favorite roads in Lafayette. Uh, it's the road over the celery bog. This whole thing is weird to me. When Jen and I first moved to Lafayette, uh, we came out here and someone told us it was the celery bog. And I didn't even know that celery came in bogs. I did a little bit of research and I found out they used to grow celery around here. And so I really love this road because it had all these undulations in it. It was before the bridge was here. They would just have some asphalt and you'd ride along it and it was incredibly bumpy. It was my favorite road because if you got enough speed, you could catch just a little bit of the butterfly feeling in your stomach. So they put in this road and it would sink. Like not the whole thing, but portions of it would sink into the bog and other portions would kind of buckle up. And so the road was constantly having these undulations in it and it was a terrible, terrible road. But it was fun to drive, at least I enjoyed driving it. So they decided to replace it with this bridge that we're on right now. And when they built the bridge, I learned a lesson about the road that came before it. Apparently, the way they had built the previous road was always just by cutting corners. They put in a road, and then when it sank into the bog, they would put another road to replace it. And when it sank into the bog, they'd do it again. And just every time they built that road, they cut whatever corners they needed to cut to save whatever money they needed to save to just do one more job that would last for just a little bit until a couple years ago when they decided they were gonna do it for real. This bridge was the result of completely tearing out the old road, digging deeply into the bog all the way to bedrock, putting in pylons as deep as they could go, and then building an actual, stable, well-engineered bridge. That was a long time ago, a few years ago, and the bridge is now fine. You can see cars are driving on it. There's none of the undulation. There's none of the bouncing around. It's working well. And it all came down to them just doing it right. You know, there's this line in the Lord's Prayer where Jesus says, your kingdom come. Talking about our prayer to our Heavenly Father, he says, your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. That's the part of the prayer that reminds us that we're not supposed to cut corners. We're not supposed to do things our way. We're not supposed to do things the convenient way. We're supposed to do things God's way. The prayer says, your kingdom come, meaning God, I no longer want to do things the way that's most convenient to me. I want your will to be done. Today, for our reflection time, today for our time in prayer, I want to invite you to just investigate your heart a little bit. Where have you been cutting corners? Where have you been doing things just to get by? Where have you been doing things to compromise or to do what's most convenient to you? The prayer says, God, your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. One of these days, his will is going to be done. One of these days, his kingdom will come. The question for you and me today is whether we're joining God in His kingdom and His will today. As you join me in prayer, let's pray introspectively and let's ask God to guard our hearts, that we would do things today to honor Him and His kingdom for His purposes, according to His will, and to let our cutting corners go by the wayside.